Today, I will be explaining level 165, aka the Chrome Bliss. Now, you've all seen that SpongeBob episode where Squidward gets locked inside the freezer, wakes up in the future, and everything is chrome. And he kind of gets in the fetal position, and you know what I'm talking about. Future. That's exactly what this backrooms level is like. And if you think that sort of thing is interesting, then you should stick around for the explanation, please. Without further ado, let's get into the video, shall we? Level 165 is the 166th level in the back rooms. And as of right now, it's been given a class three difficulty because of its lack of stability and its difficulty to exit. Since every surface is made out of chrome, it's kinda hard to no clip through it. The level takes the overall appearance of an infinitely extending conglomeration of abstract environments. These environments are woven together into a chrome landscape, which looks like the cybercore aesthetic from the late 1990s. The terrain, the patterns, the colors, all of that fluctuates randomly. And essentially, there's a ton of change and warping and reflections and echoes that are always happening around this level. Across the chrome expanse, you'll see randomly placed chrome spheres and waves and hills and all sorts of things like that. And of course, they are all glossy and reflective and very luminescent. It's all chrome as far as the eye can see. Chrome, 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 and then more chrome. Even the sky above you is tinted with a chrome color, and there are usually chrome clouds floating throughout. The light here comes from some kind of sun that's behind the clouds, but no one can see it, so we can't confirm that it's there. Besides the chrome expanse of land here, there are also massive stretches of chrome-colored water. The water itself is shallow in depth, no more than knee or waist deep, and it's actually been deemed to be fresh and normal water. The only thing off with it is that it might have like a slight metallic aftertaste, so drink it at your own risk. We don't know if it's gonna hurt you or not. I have an important announcement. This is not a sponsor, so don't click away. I've started a brand new podcast with four other YouTubers. These YouTubers, you probably know them. They are Dire Trip, Fox Akimbo, Raymundo2112, and Night YT here on YouTube. If you wanna see all of us just goofing around, talking about crazy things, talking about funny things, and and serious things too, you'll really enjoy it over there. I'm sure, I know we have a lot of fan overlap. Um, I know all of us do, so go check it out. Go subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's fine, but I just wanted to let you know the podcast is up. Several episodes are already up. Go check it out if you're interested. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Now back to what y'all actually clicked on the video for. So level 165 is subject to severe reduction in gravity and is estimated to be over 90% less powerful than the gravity from Earth. This means a couple of things. One is that you can jump higher and land slower since the gravity isn't pulling you down very hard. And as cool as that sounds, there are some deadly consequences that will happen to you because of this. The lack of gravity will cause multiple cardiovascular and skeletal issues that will happen to you if you're exposed to it for too long. You may experience muscle decay or bone decay, and your entire body will get more and more brittle the longer you stay here. It's almost like advanced aging. This will all happen as long as you stay inside of this chrome expanse. So you probably shouldn't do it. There are even more random chrome spheres inside this level. There are some that are levitating, some that are in the water, some that are on the ground, some that are in the clouds. They're all over the place. And they mainly give that vibe of cybercore that I was talking about earlier. Which brings up another interesting point, actually. There's a theory in the back rooms called the Cower Thesis, and this theory proposes how the back rooms was created and why it's real. Essentially, it is a proposed theory that the back rooms and all its levels were created, and it says that the back rooms exists simply because people collectively believe that it does, which would make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. Essentially, the back rooms went viral, and because it went viral specifically on the internet, some of the levels here take the appearance of the internet. Like the chrome levels will look like the cybercore internet aesthetic, and some of the other levels will look like glitchy lines of code, like level 404 and the end. It makes sense. I mean, if we manifested the backrooms to be real through the internet, it does kind of make realistic sense that some levels would look like the internet. 
Anyways, that's just a theory on how this specific level came to be, and that's why it looks like Cybercorp threw up everywhere. Also, we miss you, MatPat. The level is intoxicating and addictive to explore for wanderers who come here. It almost seems like a heaven to many people. Since there's like no entities here and you're safe to explore this chrome infinity forever, everything seems cool but comfortable. The temperature is moderate and there's no heat or cold to worry about. The ground below you is calm and cool to the touch. And really the only thing that sucks is the lack of gravity that can make you to wither away. It also is assumed that staying here for extended periods of time will begin to turn you yourself into chrome to an extent. We don't know if this is physical or mental, but it seems like it can literally shift your entire brain into chrome. Because all you're seeing is chrome, all you're looking at and all you're feeling is chrome. Eventually you yourself will turn to chrome, but this isn't for sure. Now the chrome spheres that I mentioned earlier are not completely, you know, sedentary. They do not stay still. They don't sit in one spot. In fact, they move and dash very quickly around the level, sometimes at dangerous speeds or in dangerous directions. There's no propulsion that moves them, they just instantly dash from one spot to another with unimpeded movements. They defy logic, much like the rest of the level it's always warping does. The spheres can be a danger to humans if one runs right into you since it is a giant metal wrecking ball and it will crush you. So try not to stand in like a path of a ball. There's actually a subspace of this chrome expanse too that will take you beyond the wasteland of chrome. It's called level 165-1 and it's very interesting. The subspace acts as a loading screen for this level, almost like a video game loading screen. And what I mean by that is that it is just a pure white plane of existence that stretches out for infinity. There's no above, there's no below, it is just a white plane. Nothing you can touch, you're just walking on whiteness forever. There's only two tangible objects in this white plane, that is a glass sphere and this blue glass rod that's tied around it. The sphere and the rod are literally the only things here. They're the only things you can see while you're in this area. And during this period where you're stuck in the loading screen of this sub area, the chrome part of the main level will change and warp. When it changes and warps, it will send you here to wait out the change. Once the change is over, it will take you back to the main part. This will last typically like 40 minutes or something. And once the main level is changed, you will be taken out of this loading screen area and put back into the chrome expanse. And while you're here in the loading screen, you can do nothing because there's literally nothing to do but walk around and explore whiteness forever. There are no confirmed methods of entry to this level, but most people who get sent here say that they were born in the late 90s or the early 2000s and experience the cybercore aesthetic online firsthand. So maybe the only way to get here is if you were born and saw it from real life, who knows? This level instills a huge sense of nostalgia for people who come here. It's a reminder of the simpler times from their life from the front rooms. That's why people like to stay here, even if it's more dangerous than they think. Exiting the level is no cakewalk either. It's, it's very hard to no clip because the landscape changes a lot and it's hard because it's chrome. But your best chance to get out is if you can find a solid part that does not shift. If you can find something that doesn't change of the level, you can no clip through it and get sent out. The only danger in this entire level is really your own thoughts and, and the gravity. Like you can explore this infinity of chrome and this calmness, but you could also make yourself go crazy and end up like Squidward in the fetal position saying, you know, like, future, future. over and over and over again, uh, because that's all you see forever. So hopefully that doesn't happen to you. And if you watch this video and learn how to exit, it shouldn't happen to you. Cool. That's it for the video. Thank you for watching to the end. If you got one single ounce of enjoyment from it, leave a like. And if you do want more stuff like this, I post three to four times a week. So you might as well subscribe. It is free. Check out my other channel, Spoogly, for video documentaries on morbid topics and disappearances and internet crimes and all that good stuff. They're longer videos typically, and they show my face. So if you like that style, check it out. Thank you for all you do. Love and appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video.